Uh, I'm ready for a nice, relaxing shift. Oh, god damn. So, you signed up to be a medical doctor, huh? Well, you're in for a treat. <laughs> you're gonna be fucking real busy. Alright, so, gonna start with a tour of this place and then we'll go into how to treat different types of damage and then some minor surgery. Surgery is really easy, particularly on this code base because you basically have a computer that will just tell you what you need to do. Um, so, we've got some equipment in here. First off, let's take my ID and put it in there. But, uh, medical belt, not a bad idea to have one of those. So, you can take some syringes. This one actually, oh no, it's empty. You can put syringes in your medical belt as well as medicine. We'll get into that in a bit. In here you've got prosthetic limbs, which I'll go into more later during the surgery thing. Uh, but in here you can find a health scanner. Good idea to have one of those. Shows your shows people's health bars and if they're sick and whatnot. Uh, what else we got in here? We got some gloves. Not a bad idea. Spread don't wanna be spreading no germs, infections and shit. Yeah. There's also some health scanners down here. As well as space cleaner. Which, uh, you can take with you if you'd like. Medical gets pretty messy, so if you want to keep it clean, don't trust the janitor to do that job for you, you can take that and, you know, get it done. Defibrillator, I will go into later. I'm not really going to be able to show you how to use it, necessarily, because there aren't any other players on here, because, you know, private server and whatnot, just for education educational purposes. Uh, Chief of Medical Office, not something we're gonna, we got some broken lights in here. These are just little patient rooms, which I've pretty much never seen anyone use. Uh, probably more for your RP servers, but yeah. Uh, let's see, this is cry the cryo cell room. Uh, up here we have the morgue where you uh, plop them dead bodies. Uh, a little piece of paper here will tell you what different lights on these uh, things mean. So if you ever uh, need that explained, I mean you could just read that. So I won't bother going through it. Um, here's the cloning place. You will probably, as a medical doctor, be using this more than g the geneticists do, but who knows, maybe you'll have super active geneticists and they will uh, do it for you. But yeah, I'll go into that later. This is chemistry, which you've seen if you watch my old tutorials, um, though this is a totally different layout from the Paradise uh, map, obviously. And on here we have surgery. And that about does it for the tour. So, as a medical doctor, first thing you want to do uh, is set this up, the cryo cells up. So, what you're going to do is you're going to take this wrench, you're going to wrench these babies down. Then you're going to go over this machine here, click it, and then lower the temperature all the way, turn that stuff on. Alright, and then you can click on these and also set them both to auto. Now, before we put these beakers in, which is the shit that will heal people when you stick them in these, we're going to go over to genetics. We're going to grab this bottle of mannitol, or you can have a chemist make some mannitol for you. We won't grab the whole thing. We will, however, take a couple pills out of it. And we will dissolve them in the beaker that we're going to put in. The reason you're doing this is mannitol heals brain damage, so, and this stuff does not by itself. So you stick that in, now it's got that and mannitol in it. So good. Those are all set up. 
that's all you have to do in here. And then, uh, if you want, you can come in here and grab, you know, any of these special kits if you want to have them. You spawn with a normal first aid kit, which you can put in your backpack. But this is oxygen deprivation. These pills here will uh, heal oxygen damage. And then uh, the EpiPens are like just for, you know, bringing you back from crit, basically. If you have someone in crit, toxin, first aid kit, you probably go through these pretty quick. Um, thankfully, unlike Paradise, these are really well stocked. Paradise only has like one that has pills in it, but this one has two bottles of charcoal pills. Good for healing toxin damage and as well as the syringes so that's for toxin damage here we have a burn kit burn patches and then these uh, pills here I believe are for if somebody is very severely burned you can give them one of those but just one because you can't overdose on it and this is brute brute damage you got the brute patches and you stick those on and it'll fix you up real good okay that's about it's all I explained, you know, what else is in there earlier. Uh, let's see. These are the sleepers, which, uh, unless you're lazy and just use the cryo tubes, uh, these can heal uh, basic damage. Calatane is for um, burns. Bicardine, however you say that, is for brute damage. Sabutamol is the, the uh, oxygen damage. Epinephrine again, bring you from crit. Morphine, I'm not really sure the practical use of morphine. I mean, obviously it's a painkiller, but don't really know what the point of it is, really. And in here we've got uh, some glasses and various medicines. Antitoxin, which is just more charcoal. And you can, of course, take some of these and stick it in your medical belt if you desire. As well, we've got these vending machines over here that also have a whole lot of stuff in them. For instance, I mean, basically just some basic medicines. Burn patches, brew patches, everything that I've already pretty much shown you. As well as you can also get stuff like that from these uh, little wall med kits, which also have some stuff in them. All right. And this is just like a, I didn't mention this earlier, if you, you know, I guess if there's excess security, someone can come and stay here for you. If you request, oh boy, we've got some people in bad shape up here. Let's get to, uh, get going. This guy in the middle needs it the least, but these two are hurting pretty bad. Let's, uh, ah, uh, the buckle then, right? Unbuckle? Yeah. So let's see what's wrong with this uh, lady here. She seems to be bleeding. Let's stick her in. Oh my, that's a lot of brute damage. It's a lot of brute damage. So now you get to in some respiratory too. I wonder why that is. So let's see this in the works. Uh, brute damage. Put some, we're gonna need more than that. You know, actually this person is a prime candidate for uh, cryo because they've got so much damage. But you can see, these have been injected in their bloodstream and they will uh, slowly heal those two types again this is for brute and that's for oxygen their lungs might be damaged so they might need surgery but and to get them out you do that real quick good can well actually I'll save that for the other person but you can leave them in here until they are healed but that should be enough it should be right back tip top shape in a little so we're just gonna leave them out here while they heal now this person let's see uh let's see what is wrong with this lady whole lot of burn damage oh boy all right so let's uh let's use the cryo tubes for this one again kelotane will heal burn but let's just uh show how these work Take the person. First off, you gotta open this door up. You want you grab them, just shift them over in there. Then you close it and turn it on. 
Now what this is going to do is it makes them unconscious. It, like, you know, it lowers their body temperature to whatever you've got the temperature set for, and it will heal all the damages, all types. So if you have someone who's real messed up and, like, you know in crit or almost dead it's really what you use these for is if someone's in crit and has just a shit ton of damage in every you know, category stick them in there and eventually they will pop out now you saw i switched this to auto earlier that will just make them pop out when they're done if you have it on manual you have to open the door yourself and let them out but we'll see once yeah there all healed and ready to get the hell out of my med bay. It does look like they still have a little bit of damage though. A little, and you can see they've got uh, all that in their bloodstream still. So it should be okay. I'm not sure what that lingering burn damage was about. It shouldn't have spit them out. So this person looks like they're still getting hurt which makes me wonder if they've got uh, damage to their lungs. I think that might be the case. This should be taking care of it though. We'll bring, we'll come back to that later. So that's the basic uh, damage types. So uh, let's, this guy, he seems to be missing an arm. Let's uh, examine him. Uh, his left arm is missing. He is holding a left arm in his right hand. Oh, good. So this guy has brought his left arm with him so we can reattach it for him. Let's just uh, grab him, take the left arm from him. So now let's uh, let's get to surgery, shall we? Let's pick his arm up. Let's put it in my backpack for now. Oh man, look at that, uh, that hairstyle. It is intense. Alright, grab him. Slap him on the table. Now in here, we have anesthetic and masks. So what you're gonna do, grab him, take the mask, stick it on his little mask slot, take the um, anesthetic tank, put it on his back. And then, set internals. And they gonna go night-night. Now, uh, let me take this jacket off and put on this surgical apron and whatnot. I've got some nitrile, however you say that, gloves on, so I don't really need the latex gloves. All right, so we have the arm. Now, I'm just gonna run through this basic surgery real quick. There, you will see when I do this, there will be a lot of different options. We might uh, do some organ stuff later though, just to show you how to do it, but, so, which arm is he missing again? He is missing his left arm. So, down here, target the left arm. Click, you grab these surgical drapes. You click, make sure you're on help intent, by the way. Should have said that. Click them. Prosthetic replacement. You'll be given, depending on which body part you target, you're, you'll be given a list of different things, different surgeries to prepare for. Once that, you don't need these surgical drapes anymore. Now, if you come over here and look at this computer, it shows you what you need to do. So it's pretty fucking easy. It also shows the blood type, just in case he's lost a lot of blood. You've got this thing full of blood in here. So he's uh, A+. Plus. He doesn't need blood, but I'm just going to show you how to do this anyway. Grab one of these IV drips, stick the blood on there and then take it drag it over to him and you'll see that it's uh, dumping blood into him now now if that were an empty pack it would be sucking blood from him I believe unless you have to actually uh, change that toggle mode you do have to change it so I could have it sucking blood out of him anyway let's get to the surgery you just keep the thing targeted that you need targeted so we need to make an incision first all right, easy enough. Go click on this computer. Now we need to clamp the bleeders. Do that, you get this hemostat. Grab it, click them. Done. All right, now we need to retract the skin. With that, we grab this retractor here. Do that. 
All right, now let's see, what else do we need? We need to add the prosthetic now. Now, as I showed you earlier, if they don't bring their uh, limb with them, you can go in here and see they've got all these different prosthetics. Or if you're some if you're out of those, you can have robotics make more prosthetics. So this is done. So let's just uh, throw all this out of here. Now all we have to do, still make sure it's targeted, and slap that baby on there. I don't even think we need to uh, cauterize for this. No, all done. You're gonna he's gonna suffer some damage, of course. He usually do. And let's. Uh, Go ahead and take these both off, the mask and the tank. And the damage is uh, minimal enough that we can just heal it in the... Uh, well, we can't heal the toxin. As uh, I didn't uh, mention that earlier, there is no toxin healing in this, um, in these sleepers. So we'll have to deal with that in a different way which I've actually already got an antitoxin bottle and a syringe. So let's draw it. Full thing. You'll be fine now. Five units should probably be enough of charcoal to heal that remaining toxin damage. Let's just check and he's totally healthy now. And hey, that is how you do surgery. Now this lady is still taking respiratory damage, it seems like. Uh, so we're just going to use her for some experiments, just to show you the different kinds of uh, surgeries you can do. She'll uh, probably end up dying. I don't recommend doing this to actual players, you know. Unless you're like the clown or something. Or unless it is the clown that you're experimenting on, in which case, you know, go wild. Uh, disclaimer, this is, uh, once again, I'm not uh, teaching you things based on server rules. Just throwing that out there. So, you know, always make sure, you know, what is a good and not good thing to do on your server that you're going to be playing on. Just uh, FYI. <laughs> So, for instance, if I teach you how to uh, plant a bomb into someone's chest cavity, you know, you might uh, want to make sure that's okay to do first. Speaking of which, surgical drapes, chest targeted. Look at all, look at all these different fucking things you can do. Cavity implant, which I just mentioned, you can literally just stick anything you want into somebody's uh, body. Giggity. Uh, implant removal has to do with uh, cybernetics. Same thing, augmentation. You put cybernetics into someone's body and that's how you remove them. Organ manipulation. If somebody needs a new heart, lungs, something, whatever, take the old one out, put a new one in. Uh, removal of embedded objects. Sometimes uh, you will have things get embedded in you. I was trying to set that up so I could show that, but I was unable to do that. But, you know, if you examine someone and it'll say they have something embedded in there, yada yada, whatever, you, you know, target that removal of embedded objects. So let's, um, let's do something nasty. All right. This is, this is just for fun. Remember, uh, ask permission first before you go plant someone's, a bomb in someone. Don't want, unless you're a traitor, in which case this is for you guys. All right. So I'm giggling. That's not good. That means that this is, um, leaking. Is this an anesthetic tank leaking? Hmm. I wonder. Anyway, we've got her set up for cavity. So let's uh, make the incision. Let's see if I can uh, remember how to do this without looking at the computer. Hemostat, retractors, I'm pretty sure saw. Yep, yep. 
Uh, maybe bleeders again? Nope. See, if it's wrong, you end up attacking the person. Which isn't good. And then another incision, and we probably retract again. Maybe. Nope. Okay, it's ready. As you can see, it says down here, you begin to insert the retractor into so-and-so's chest. So, that means they are ready. Now, uh, I'm gonna go get something. I will, uh, be right back. Alright, I am back, and as you can see, I've got a little, uh, little bit of a surprise for this person when they wake up. So, I need to, uh, do this quick. It's set for 45 seconds. Let's, uh, turn it on. And we're just gonna insert it into their chest. And then, uh, grab this cautery right here and cauterize the wounds to shut. Yep, yep. And all we gotta do, let's, uh, let's disable those internals. And then we will take the anesthetic tank and the mask off. And, uh, then just, uh, yeah. We'll just, uh, wake them up. Do a little wakey wakey. That's a nice thong this girl's wearing. Jesus. Thick as fuck. Damn. We'll just, uh, have, have a good day, miss. But, uh, yeah, that's how you do the cavity implant. And, like I said, surgery is really simple. Especially with that computer to tell you what to do. It should not take you long at all. I've seen people have people in surgery for, like, ten plus minutes. And there's just no goddamn reason for it. Like, at all. It should be in done, you know? So, uh, just a few more things to teach you. Uh, let's use this guy as an example. Graham, you. Um, God, I keep forgetting about that hair. God damn. So, if you have a dead person, they're dead as fuck. And, uh, let's see. Say they've only been dead for about a minute. You can probably use this defibrillator on them. Gotta get rid of your backpack. Put the defibrillator on there. Grab it. Yeah, if they're on the ground, you can shock them. So, uh, this is gonna be bad for him. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't actually let you. So, that's how you can revive somebody who's been dead for a very short amount of time. But if their damage is extensive, it's probably not gonna work at all. Um, but... So you can revive someone, and as soon as you do, you want to get them into a cryo tube, basically, because they're not going to stay alive for long if you do it that way. So that's one example of bringing someone back to life. So if they're dead as fuck, you can't, uh, you can't, um, you know, bring them back at all with that method. You gotta go to a cloner. So medical doctor should have access to this. Uh, even if it's not a skeleton crew, I think you should have access to this. What you do, put the dead body into the scanner, close it up, and you see something something ray scan. You start the scan. If this were, okay, so if this were a real player and they their ghost was still in their body, it would say successful. And then you can view the records and clone them from the records. And they'll be in here. And once they're all done, they pop out and they're going to be naked and disoriented. you got to take them to the cryo chamber, get them all healed up. And sometimes uh, they're going to have genetic defects. So you might want to also put some of this uh, mutadone up here into the uh, beakers for the cryo tube. Or just get ask the geneticist if they have a clean SE thing, uh, which uh, I'm not going to get into right now. Sometime I'll probably do a tutorial on genetics, and that'll fucking make sense, but not today. Also, uh, it'll say this when uh, they're not in their body, basically. It'll actually uh, say something similar if you use the defib on them and they're not in their body. It'll say, I can't remember what, but it won't work. So it's good to try it a couple times just so, because the ghost will get a message, hey, someone's trying to defib you or uh, clone you. So it's good to try it a few times and you'll eventually maybe see, you know, they're ready. And that brings us to the morgue. If, uh, you know, dead body so on and so forth 
uh, grab a body bag out of this crate here, put it on the floor, zip it up, put it in the morgue. So, bam. As you can see, that's red, which means plain old dead body inside. However, if you put somebody's body in here and it's green, it means that the player has returned it to their body and they want to be cloned. So you take them out, put them in the cloner, and it should work. And uh, let me see. Is that about it? Is that about it? I think that is basics for the medical doctor. All done. So you should be uh, relatively competent now. I'm sure there's shit that I missed. Because I pretty much always miss shit. And I'm sure people in the comments would be like, Hey, you missed this shit. Because they, they tend to do that even though I don't claim to have, you know, supreme knowledge of this game. This is just for, you know, you guys who don't know. You know? You dig? But yeah, that is, uh, I think that's it. Hopefully I haven't fucked up and missed anything. Let's, uh, let's take this off. Let's take our mask off. We've worked hard today. Have a little bit of a break. See how our old, uh, old friend is doing over in Escape. See, uh, if everything worked out in her favor. So, uh, oh no. Oh, oh no.